connect with is the core mission of um, advocates of human rights, which is about preserving, safeguarding, and sheltering human dignity. This is an explosive, emotional work. Um, I'm talking about taking statements, uh, documenting. Uh, uh, traumatic experiences, discussing atrocities, unimaginable, egregious violations of people's rights. And the staff and the board um, and our supporters, you know, we keep that flame of, of justice where basic human dignity needs to be sheltered uh, because human beings are sacred. In Arizona, right now, we have a system that I think Bishop Desmond Tutu just called out as a first step toward apartheid. It, we see, a, a, I think, an opportunity to bring the human rights framework into our public policy, whether it's in immigration, in our work with the death penalty, our groundbreaking work on ending violence against women. Um, this really is the heart of what public policy, good public policy, should be. Have had requests, so many requests from women around the world who are working to change their systems so that their laws and the way those laws are implemented better protect women and girls from violence. And we have been privileged to watch laws get passed, to be part of that, to help them draft the laws, and then to go back at the invitation of groups in other countries and help them implement those laws. And we, what we see then is women and children's safety being protected in ways that it never was before. The other example I think about is the one we're working on recently in Morocco. And there they have asked us to help them draft a law on violence against women that would be the first of the kind if it passes in the Arab world. A human rights advocate, whatever they do in Minneapolis, is contributing to everything that we do because there's a connection from this community to Liberia, to Sierra Leone, to Ghana, to Guinea, and to all other places. If people understand the significance of protecting human rights, of everyone, they will understand the significance of how it affects their own lives. Human rights education being the foundation for making sure that the classes are safe, that they're inclusive of all learners, that they're child-centered, that they're action-oriented, that kids are actually encouraged to be activists in their communities and to uphold the rights of others, as well as um, making sure that they're either defending their own rights when they need to, standing up for themselves, and being responsible for upholding the rights of themselves and other students. Whenever governments abuse human rights, whenever the warlords are in power, whenever the weak are oppressed by the strong, it's important to have knowledgeable and dedicated advocates who support the rule of law and to have education efforts, investigation efforts, reporting, and all kinds of legal support for returning the rule of law into places in the world where it's been overthrown. The Advocates does as effective a job of that as, as any organization that I'm aware of. A lot of the clients that we have are people who've arrived in the United States without any money or any resources and they're fleeing because they've um, possibly been victims of human rights abuses in their country or maybe they're people who are human rights advocates in their countries, um, people who are advocating for democratic change and they've been forced to flee their countries because they don't have any other, any way to live there safely and so they need legal status, they need an ability to stay in the U.S. 33 years ago my family and I immigrated from Vietnam and we were refugees from, from Vietnam and uh, in talking to my parents about it at that time uh, you know, they told me about how there are so many people um, that helped us you know, get to the United States, get residency, sent us here and there were a lot of volunteers just like volunteers here 
at the Advocates and uh, staff members that we have here. Those are the same people that helped us, help my family come here and get residency status, come here and get settled in the United States. And so when I thought about the impact that you know those people had, why, why, again, why wouldn't I want to contribute to an organization um, in some capacity? The Advocates have been one organization that has really reached into the community to try to see how they can help resolve issues, try to see how they can best support the community as we come from a war situation, for example. So there's no comparison really and truly. I hope there is a time, and there will be a time, there's gender equity. There is a time when tyranny ends. There will be a time when tyranny there is a time when immigrants um, who are now making laws and rules against other immigrants can turn back two or three generations and ask themselves their accountability of coming into the shores of North America. As long as there are people who support uh, human rights, as long as there are people who support uh, basic human dignity, as long as there are people in the world who look at the world and envision the world um, with a sense of equity, uh, there, there will be there is hope and there is future. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. My name is Wadalami. I am a human rights advocate. I'm an advocate for human rights. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. I am 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 an advocate. Hi, I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate for human rights. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. I'm an advocate for human rights. Hi, I'm an advocate. I am an advocate. I am an advocate. So I am an advocate. I'm an advocate. <laughs> I am an advocate. <laughs>